Peace be to you all. This is Omar Abdul Malik, physician, associate, and health educator, and moderately fit, middle aged endurance athlete. So, I was asked about classes to take during undergraduate that would be helpful in PA school as well as being helpful as a uh, practicing clinician. And I'd say some of the most important classes include courses like uh, Fundamentals of Anatomy and Physiology because you're going to have that in PA school. So your fundamentals course of anatomy and physiology in undergraduate is not going to be as intricate as the one that you'll take in PA school. For instance, I, I have a degree in biology. That was my first degree before getting into PA school. So I took a co combined course in anat anatomy and physiology. Never set foot in the gross lab. Uh, it wasn't until PA school that I was actually in the gross lab dissecting a cadaver uh, that was a different experience. So then you're, you're uh, learning a lot more about anatomy. And anatomy was, a, was a, a separate course. And physiology was a separate course in PA school. The physiology was very difficult. There's a, there's a lot of um, mathematical components in, in physiology, especially when you start talking about things um, pertaining to the heart, so things like stroke volume and uh, things like that. Um, for the lungs, negative pressure, understanding that. So, so more mathematical components are, uh, are discussed in a more intricate level of, uh, of a physiology course, which segues to your math courses. It's a good idea if you take uh, calculus in undergraduate. I didn't have calculus. I, I took uh, biostatistics, which actually helped me more in my, my uh, doctorate because I had to be familiar with uh, statistical and um, statistical analysis and things like um, SPS format I think it's SSP format I haven't seen this stuff in so long but uh, your your Q values and, and things like that um, so biostatistics is a very good course to take I, I didn't find um, a lot of math um, in in PA school maybe maybe something like pharmacology you would use it. I really don't use a lot of math in my practice as a uh, as a as a PA. Um, maybe for something like the uh, I don't know what's there's a um, Quark Cox Galt uh, equation that we use when um, trying to figure out uh, you know things like creatinine clearance with with age and then gender. You know if you're trying to figure out um, uh, dosing for a particular drug with a patient. It, you know, you've got, uh, you've got apps for that now. <laughs> so, you, so you really don't have to, you don't have to um, know that, that um, high functioning level of math. Um, another course that was useful to me was, um, uh, let's see, a course like um, microbiology, for instance. Microbiology, uh, from my other video that I did, Previously, I was discussing antibiotics. Well, microbiology, you get introduced to things like morphology of different bacteria. So the shape of bacteria, cocci versus rods, your anaerobic versus aerobic bacteria, gram positive versus gram negative. So you learn about those things in microbiology. Um, another course was uh, parasitology. So I had that in undergrad. Uh, you may be introduced to certain drugs in, in um, your pharmacology courses, uh, drugs like ivermectin, you know, it's just all in the news now with this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So ivermectin is a, is a um, anti-parasitic drug. Well, if you understand the types of parasites that, that it fights, um, then you, you would have had um, a course in, in um, parasitology possibly, but I had that in, in undergrad. Uh, what else? Maybe a writing course for your non-science courses. Um, you know, I've got to communicate with um, a lot of the specialists, so ID specialists, infectious disease, uh, cardiology, psychiatry. Oftentimes I don't see these specialists, but the only way I can communicate, I communicate with them is through the notes that they leave behind in the electronic medical records. Well, if they don't if they're not able to effectively articulate 
what their findings are and what their treatment plans are, or I'm not able to effectively understand them, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that patient. Uh, and that kind of that kind of negates the need, you know, the uh, the use of, of um, seeking the counsel of a, of a specialist. But uh, the specialists with whom I deal are, do a great job. But you know, you in undergraduate you'll have English courses, English 101 and 102, that will teach you to effectively communicate via writing. That's important, even though we don't have the old-fashioned writing notes like the old doctor's charts with the with the chicken scratch writing in it. Everything, almost everything is exclusively EMR, so electronic medical records, but you still have to know how to effectively communicate even with um, typed print on, on the electronic medical records. So that's it for now. So those courses, I hope you found this um, to be of some benefit. So I wish all of you guys who are trying to get into PA school or your respective uh, programs, whether it's med school or your uh, nurse practitioner school, I wish you guys the best of success in your positive endeavors. If you are a pre-PA student and would like some type of mentorship or just want to ask me for advice, um, I'm, I'm happy to give it to you. I, I can uh, make myself available through Instagram. I'll leave my contact information in the description. I've been a PA for more than 20 years. I spent uh, 15 years in outpatient and uh, the past almost seven years in uh, doing a hospice medicine. That's it for now. Take care. Peace.